Uh, we want to welcome everyone to our December HE Tug. Um, we're going to start out a little differently uh, than we have in the past. Um, and as you're probably aware from you know the music theme and everything else that's going on outside, it's probably hard to escape the fact that is now the season, uh, the holiday season. And every time around, or every year around this time, Ginny puts together some Christmas sand libs. So uh, Ginny, what's in store this year? Oh, that's a surprise. You're gonna have to go find out for yourself. All right, well, I'm just gonna let you guys know that this is what that Mad Lib that I filled out looked like. Um, and I did use the monkeys theme song because, you know, the monkeys. It's National Monkey Day. I couldn't not. Um, and the results were pretty entertaining. So uh, go check out Ginny's uh, Christmas Mad Libs. It is in the, the chat. Um, yeah. All right, so what's on today's agenda? Well, first we're gonna have some announcements and then we're going to meet our community member, Matt Capabianco from Pierce. And we're gonna have to change things up a little because poor Christy has the flu and she cannot present today and we wouldn't expect her to. So we're gonna fly by the seat of our pants and offer uh, the first time ever higher education to hug Tableau Doctor, AKA tips and tips, tips and tricks turned around backwards, upside down. You know, we're just gonna see if we can make that work. So if you have any burning questions, um for how to do something in a viz or you know make something work that's not working for you please feel free to um, ask the tableau doctor and then at the end we're going to have a wrap up and chat in our breakout rooms and just you know enjoy each other's company because this is our last he tug of 2022. So if anyone has any announcements they want to make, um, you know, job postings, anything else, uh, feel free to post them in the chat or come off mute. Um, and I've also included in the chat the open position Slack channel. So if you want to post them up there for a little bit more visibility, feel free to do so. All right, no announcements, then I guess we will get started with meet a community member. So uh, everyone, I'd like you to welcome Matt Capabianco. He is from Pierce University. And just a funny aside about Pierce University, okay? So when I went to uh, search for pierce.edu, I flipped around the I and the E and it took me by surprise a bit what came up. Um, Matt, have you ever gone to yeah, Pierce.edu? There's one in Washington and one in <laughs> California, yep. So um, I'll let you all, Pack that in for yourselves and see what comes up and and then you can laugh along with me because yeah I was just a little bit surprised but anyway Matt has been at Pierce for 16 years and he started as a financial analyst and then moved into the budget director role and then back in 2015 he took over a new role specifically created to focus on reporting and analytics and I guess that's where you are now huh Matt yeah haven't moved still there excellent you must like it so I'll, I'll let you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and describing your role and your team. Uh, so I'm a team of one, basically, um, and I pretty much do all of the reporting for everything. So financial aid, everything out of the SIS, marketing data, uh, all the institutional reporting. So got a lot on my plate and a lot of different systems that I'm working with. Sounds like it. Anybody who is an office of one has a lot on their plate. Uh, so I guess we can probably guess, but I'll let you tell us what kind of data, what types of data do you work with? Uh, really, it's absolutely everything. And it's a lot of data aggregation and financial aid systems and finance. And I'm, I'm just got reports basically on autopilot at this point, just making tweaks to push out to people and, you know, the, uh, early warning systems for students out of the canvas and making sure that students are engaged with classes and pushing that where it needs to go and then pretty much everything. Yeah. How, how do you use Tableau at work? Uh, it's, I really utilize Tableau prep a ton. I find that to be way more useful. So 
I have a lot of, like I said, early alert systems where if the student isn't participating in class, I catch a bunch of them and I'll push them out to the advisors. Like that's one of my really important ones. And a lot of weekly tracking to how we're performing against goal and performing against last year that goes out to senior management. Um, those are my, my main, main takeaways there. That sounds really interesting. I guess you're uh, a lot of people's favorite person to hear from, huh? Uh, I'm either their favorite person or I'm the worst. They're like, we're not <laughs> against goal. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to hear about it. It's like, just. So uh, do you have a favorite Tableau project that you have worked on? So my favorite one is probably the most boring one. And we run in very condensed sessions. So it's this big, massive grid. And then we break down where each new student started, where readmits started certain populations and groups. And it's just this big matrix all broken down comparing to grill, uh, the grid persistence, retention, and just this massive report that I push out every week. But it is the most dry, boring report you've ever seen in your life. But I'm pretty proud of how I put it together. That'd be something I'd like to see. So how long have you been using Tableau and how did you learn it? Uh, about six years at this point, I want to say, and I just started poking around with it and just kind of figuring stuff out. And I went to a user's group at Comcast building and uh, one of the guys, I don't know if anyone's familiar with him, Ryan Sleeper was <laughs> presenting and he had this book called Practical Tableau and he kind of was like, yeah, it's a, hey, like, here's a coupon for it. I'll give you for a half off. And I took it and just went through the book start to finish pretty much and like that helped me out immensely he is one of my favorites um i i still subscribe to his blog and get updates pretty frequently they're fantastic yeah it was funny how dismissive he was of his his work really it was like yeah it's kind of a first draft but you know i'll, I'll give it to you for half it's like all right cool <laughs> so uh do you have a favorite tableau feature I'd really say Tableau prep is my way more favorite thing just for data aggregation. And because we've got, I'm sure a lot of places have seven different systems with different, you know, data sets and SQL based. So pulling all that into one thing and being able to push it out and then use it in Tableau is, is my fave. Is there anything in Tableau that you would like to learn more about? I kind of stink at level of detail expressions that are fixed. Mm -hmm. kind of find them very frustrating. Um, so that. You and me both. Um, so what is one thing that you wish you could go back in time and tell to Tableau newbie you? Start with Tableau prep sooner. It was about two years until I touched it and realized, oh, like I don't need to make these ridiculous connections within Tableau, I can just parse and clean everything over there and push a clean data set and move on with my life. That's good advice. Uh, do you ever use Tableau outside of work? And if so, how? Uh, I, I do it just to kind of mess around. Like the most recent one I did was I've been tracking my kids height for 10 years. And I made this big data infographic of how they've grown and when one was taller than the other one and a lot of Philly sports stuff. That's a good way to learn though. All right, so is there anything else that you'd like to share before we go into our lightning round? Uh, I don't think so. All right, get ready. All right, so since your institution is located in Philadelphia and the movie Philadelphia premiered on this day in 1993, we want to know, would you rather watch a movie starring Denzel Washington or Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks and Joe vs. the Volcano is criminally underrated. That was my next question. Your favorite Tom Hanks movie. All right. So next up, uh, tomorrow is National Cupcake Day. So I want to know what is your favorite cupcake flavor? Funfetti. Yum. All right, so 10 days ago, 
on December 4th. It was National Sock Day. Okay, who knew about National Sock Day? If anybody does, raise your hand. <laughs> All right, well, that makes one of us. Um, do you prefer ankle, crew, knee high, no show, or some other kind of socks? Uh, crew, and they have to be wool. Ah. I guess when uh, you live in as cold a climate as you do, that makes a lot of sense. So we're also smack dab in the middle of lager beer week. Do you have a favorite beer? So there was a beer that I loved in Minnesota from Surly Brewing called Surly Cynic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they make it anymore. Um, so I guess I have to default to Philly Brewery Victory Summer Love. Nice. You gotta love those, uh, those local beers that you can't find anywhere else. All right, so December is also National Tie Month. Again, who knew? So uh, what kind of tie do you prefer? Ties, bow ties, bolo ties, you know, some other type? None, I hate ties with a passion. <laughs> I think they're one of the <laughs> dumbest things that have ever existed. Good enough answer. All right, so today is also the first day of Christmas Bird Count Week, which runs through January 5th, which is more than a week. And it also doesn't sound on, start on the week of Christmas, so um, I'm not really sure how it got its name, but what is your favorite bird? A gray catbird. Ah, very nice. It's, it's a, a fun little mockingbird. <laughs> I, I, I have, uh, my favorite wild bird is the snowbird, which is something that we had a lot of uh, where I used to live, but we don't have so many here. And as you may have noticed during the uh, introduction, we played some songs by the monkeys because today is National Monkey Day. And we're asking you not what your favorite kind of monkey is, but what is your favorite song by the monkeys? If, if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Stepping Stone. Nice. Well, that brings us to the end of our lightning round. If anybody would like to uh, volunteer to be a MEDA community member in a future month, please let us know because we are always looking for volunteers. Matt, thank you so much. Yeah, nice meeting everyone. All right, so as Jenny mentioned, we're doing a little bit of a change of plans. Um, and today we are going to try our hand at Tableau Doctor. Uh, for those of you who have not heard of Tableau Doctor, um, it's something that's been around in the Tableau community for a very, very long time. Um, and it's basically a way for in in-person meetings, uh, people would be at a table with a Tableau Doctor like table skirt or whatever, maybe some signage, um, maybe some stickers. Um, and basically you get to ask whoever was at that table, they're in some way some sort of expert in Tableau uh, about all of your burning Tableau questions. So things like, well, I'm trying to work on this workbook and this total just isn't coming out right, or I have no idea what's up with this table calc, or how do I make this blue a slightly different blue? Um, so we're gonna try our hand at that virtually. Um, so yeah, if you have a question for the Tableau doctor, and note that the Tableau Doctor in our case is gonna be everyone in the audience, all almost 200, 206 of us. Uh, that's a much higher number than I expected. Um, feel free to ask it. <laughs> uh, well, we want you to just raise your hand just in case we somehow get you know, a, uh, an avalanche of questions. Um, and so we can sort of you know, keep people in line and then uh, we'll ask you to unmute and share your screen if you have an example or not if you need to. Oh, look, look, there's hands being raised. Uh, Yay, we and were so worried. we were very, very worried. Um, so yeah, we will, uh, we're going to start with the first person whose hand I saw raised was Gita. Um, so Gita, I'm going to ask you to unmute. And if you want to share your screen, feel free to do so. Hi, everyone. This is Geeta here. Uh, so my question is, so right now I'm working on Tableau um, and I'm doing like a swap the screen 
like one. So in one sheet, I have five columns and another sheet, I have 10 columns. So I'm switching it. But I wanted to find out like, how can I use my filters? Because I, I wanted to filter to set up only one time. Even the sheets are swapping. I don't want to because I'm losing the filters. So how can I do that? Do you know? So um, one thing, it sounds it sounds like what you're you're trying to do is get a single set of filters to apply to both sheets, right? Correct. Yes. And then so when one sheet gets hidden, all mm -hmm. of those filters end up being empty if that's the sheet that your your filters are coming from. Correct. Yes. All right. So either you have to have two sets of filters or you need a workaround. So does anyone in the audience have a workaround? Like Alex has an answer oh. for you. Hello. Alex, do you want to come off mute and share? Sure. Um, I think you should be able to take your filter and when you do a right click and you can select what it applies to, you should have an option that says apply to all sheets that use that data source. Uh, yeah, I did that, but still but in my dashboard is not coming up. So the so your dashboard is not filtering based on that. Correct. Okay, so so that's so I'm I'm gonna try to set up an example unless um Gita, do you have an example working that you'd be able to share? Yeah, I can share. Oh, okay. Uh, then I will stop trying to create one. <laughs> okay. Um I just uh, how to share it because uh, where is the share button? Oh share screen. Okay. While you're doing that, I will say that I agree about um, what they're putting into the chat about making a dummy sheet with the filters and hiding it off screen. That is a technique that I've used before. Right, and something that I do as well. And sometimes I'll just, you know, if if you have something like a dynamic title, um, you can always you can always create a sheet just for that dynamic title and have that dynamic title be the one that has all the filters on it. That way, it's not just a dummy sheet that's hidden that no one will be able to find, which I've been told yesterday at a similar Tableau doctor was annoying the crap out of my old coworkers, uh, not naming any names or anything. Uh, right. I created like I have five columns, 10 columns, 15 columns, as well as I have the heading here. So what I'm trying to do, if I change, and here is my, still I'm working on it. So if I change my five columns, the, the columns will change, but my filters are not coming up as I needed. So fiscal, so this is coming from the five columns, but then if you see the 10 columns is empty, like from where should I pick up? And if I show my, data that I'm right now using the apply sheets all using this data source doesn't mean and then because sometimes I use the other selected sheets but I was trying on both of them but it's still not working so I'm not sure how to handle that situation so I, I think that, I, as Jenny mentioned, I think the solution that people mentioned is, is just putting a, a dummy sheet on, on your dashboard. And instead of having those filters, so like that, that, those two fiscal year filters, replace them with a filter on fiscal year from that, that third sheet that is always going to be showing. Yes. So here is my heading sheet. It's always going to show here. Okay. So, so, so if you go back to your dashboard, um, yeah. click on your heading sheet and then go to analysis. Up at the top. Yes. And then filters. filters. And you'll see that that oh that fiscal year number is coming from that yes. sheet. So any yes. other filters that you have, you want them to come from that sheet. And anything that is coming from the five column sheet or the ten column sheet, remove those. Oh, uh, that is a parameter. So, so by the parameter, the sheets are swapping, but uh, for the filters, I want to use. So this filter is coming from the heading sheet. This coming from the five five year uh, five columns. This is coming from the ten columns. So when so, I switch it, yes. 
So if you remove the ones that are coming from five and 10 columns, what ha what's what's left in your in the one that's coming from the, the header sheet? Here. That's the so does that have? Oh. No, it doesn't have anything. I can thing. try again if you want. I, so I can show you. So it's definitely it's not coming. Is there another filter that might be limiting what's showing on that one? Oh, there you go. So let's see what happens when you switch that over to another year, what happens to the data in the background. But then I want, I don't want to show the like 100 years. I wanted to show only relevant. OK. OK, so, it's, so now it's all. It's I, not... That's a, an issue with showing only relevant values I have found. That's all. OK. Because the thing is, once you have one or the other, like multiple filters, you don't want to show each and every time all the numbers you wanted to show only because right now it's only three years has the data and I don't want to show everything. Otherwise, people is there confused. another like when you go to the header um, that that's coming from on that view, is there another filter year like a uh, fiscal year filter on it that might be no, there is only one fiscal year. So like if you go to that view, can I just see what it looks like? I'm just curious. Sure. That sheet. So here is a fiscal year. Mm, so for, oh wait. for this entire data set, is it always only going to be 2022 and the last, or like, you know, 2019 to the present and 2020 to the present? Um, like, are you ever going to yeah. have 2019 data or 2018 data? Yeah. It will not, not 18, 19, but it will have 21, 22, 23. So right now and ongoing, ongoing data. Yep. Is there, is it possible to add a, um, a filter on the data source itself? So it only starts at 2020, which is the first year of data that you have. Yeah, but that's the only problem, a solution for the one fiscal year, I have so many other things that I'm working on it. And I don't want to be mess around the other thing, fiscal period. And I just want the general answers that is it possible or not? Otherwise, I should not use the swapping sheets criteria. If it's, there is no solution, then I would try deleting that fiscal year like number, like delete that filter, delete the fiscal year filter off of all of your views and then add one onto one sheet and see what happens. Because sometimes I'll accidentally add the same filter in a couple different places and it'll kind of like break for some reason. It, it breaks stuff because there's like three different filters. And so some views only see some and some views mm -hmm. see different ones. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. I will try that. Yeah, uh, play, play around with it some more offline. Um, and if you are still hitting a wall, um, uh -huh. Go into the Slack and and post it there, and we may be able to you know do a little bit more uh, you know hunting down of what 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 of uh, what's causing the problems. Okay, all, all right. right, sure. Thank you very much. So yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Gita. Thank thank you for being our first uh, Tableau doctor patient. Yeah, sure. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> all right. Uh, so who's up next? Greg, Greg Calm, Calms. I'm gonna, I'm probably mispronounce your name, I'm sorry. Um, you are up next. If you wanna go ahead and, and unmute and ask your question. Sure, thank you very much. Um, so I'm a little bit newer to Tableau and learning. We are in the process of um, updating one of our Tableau tables for a new um, table and a new database. Um, we're having a little bit of an issue with the location data for our international students showing up. And now for our more local and US-based students, whenever there was an issue with it finding the location, um, it was really easy to just go in and, and, and correct it. Um, but for some reason for international, that isn't the case. 
it just doesn't show an option for it. And so I'm guessing that there's some issue somewhere else that needs to be corrected before I'm able to get the correct location to showcase on the map. Um, and I'm, I've done a little bit of reading, but because the options aren't there compared to what we see on the online help, um, it's kind of hard to know exactly where to look. And so this is perfect time for me to ask the Tableau doctor, I suppose. <laughs> So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna sit this one out because because mapping and Tableau they scare me. Um, so we're gonna ask the audience: Does anyone have any uh, any potential solutions? What fields do you have in your data set? Um, yeah, city, country. Yeah, it's basically just country. And so which countries are not mapping? So um, for when I was running into issues with state and US based, mm -hmm. it would show the little error code in the bottom right saying unknown. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. can click that and correct it. But now I'm getting it as a null value instead of an unknown value. And the option to correct it isn't there. And so when I put the data at the default position, it will actually show you all of the countries mm -hmm. there and I could probably drag and drop them, but that doesn't fix the issue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so is, is citizenship um, set as a geographic entity? So if you right, like if you look in the data pane and right click there, you see it says ABC. If you right click on that, um, on not on the, actually there, yeah, under geographic role, what if you, you have it set for none? So if you set it to country, what happens? Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> I solved a map problem. I hate maps and I solved a map problem. So thank you for this. Uh... Oh, man. I really appreciate that. Excellent. Maps okay, and well, Tableau. I'll stop sharing my screen. <laughs> well, thank, thanks for sharing thanks for your question. problem. Yeah. Um, all right, Haim, you're up next. Yeah, hello everybody. So um, I want to, start by saying that um, unfortunately I have quite a few users who really love their Excel tables and no really <laughs> I don't know how that happened um, so I'm trying to create Excel like tables in Tableau for some of the users and I have ran into uh, this interesting I think issue so I have um, this dimension or I have, let's say a table that shows income and expense. Uh, expense obviously is, is a negative number. And then I have, I'm using the Tableau um, internal feature of grand total, which basically does, you know, this cell plus this cell. Now my users don't want to see the expense as minus. They want to see the expense as a positive number, but I need the grand total to still show me the same number. So now I needed to show this cell minus that cell. And the grand total functionality just doesn't work that way. So I wanted to see if anybody had any idea. I think you just changed the negative uh, the negative display and stack away the parentheses. So if you go to your, uh, do, you have, do you have one up? No, th this is the Excel. I don't have Okay, I, don't oh, have I didn't know if you yet. have it. Because I think in the, for the numbers, yeah. uh, you, well, you can customize the, the format, the numbers, and just for negatives, make the, the negative format look identical to the positive format. But uh, it's, Tableau should still know it's a negative, so it will still subtract it. It just won't look that way. OK, so I have, I, I, I'll have to mess around with it. But it's within, it's hidden within the format. Yeah. I have an option to define how the, mine, how the negatives show up. It's it's very similar to what you would do in a, you could do in Excel. Yeah. Is you could make a negative, you can go into the format detail in Excel and make a negative, like some people like the parentheses, some people like to turn it red, some people right. want the negative. So the same format functionality is available. So basically, yeah, you're just taking a negative for a negative number, making it look like a positive number. Um, the grand total function in, um, in Tableau so far is not editable. It just adds or aggregates right, right down the column. There's no way to identify um, 
plus plus minus divide yes. whatever so so i'm i'm trying to show i mean i have the worst data to show this on because i don't have any negatives but this is so what i did was i clicked on some sales here went to format and then under numbers you can do whatever you know let's say we just mm -hmm. want we're going to do start with custom or sorry start with like oh, okay. the standard number format and then go mm -hmm. to custom um and you could do something i'm probably going to mess this up um <laughs> I believe actually, actually you, you're, you're right. Go, go, yeah, go to custom, yeah, go to custom and then go. Ah, uh, now now mm -hmm. click custom. Now, and oh, the, there we now go. Just... And now we can just take away that negative. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, you again can't see it okay. here because I got okay. no negatives. But but that should that should do it, right? I I will play with that, um, and then the next step will be to convince people to move away from tables. Thank you all. <laughs> Good luck, <laughs> and thank you for sharing. Course. All right. Up next, we have Kelsey. Kelsey Thompson, if you want to come off mute. Hi. Um, I don't have a show and tell for this because it's something related to like saving extracts and things. But I've wondered if anyone else has run into this issue. So sometimes when I make um, when I do something in Tableau Prep and then I have it save the output as an extract and I go in and I use that and make my dashboards and then I'm going to publish. And it's, you know, if I publish on Tableau public, it gives a message of like, you know, this has to be an extract and it makes me like resave a new one. And I can't just like save it with the same name. I have to give it a different name. And so then I have like an extract of an extract floating around for like everything that I make <laughs> and it's super annoying. Um, and so I don't know like what's making that happen or if there's something I'm doing maybe that's, um causing it so i just i didn't know if anyone else has run into that or knows anything about it but um yeah so do we have any uh tableau public uh users out in the uh in the community when it prompts you to do an extract is there an option where it's like select an extract instead i don't think so because it'll you know it'll say something like well maybe I mean I'll have to look I guess more carefully the next time I do it but I think it'll just be like you know an extract must be created or whatever and then there's just a button to hit okay and then it opens up my file folder you know wherever I have it saved and then I can't just save it as the same name I have to like give it you know I'll put a two after it or whatever and then I think it's it still functions when I run my Tableau prep, like it updates both of them, but it's basically like then it's an extract of that extract somehow and sort of like takes away the point of creating it in prep for the in the first place. Um, so it might just be like some too. weird it, thing. It <laughs> I don't know. Is it an extract file or is it a hyper file that you're producing from prep workflow? Um. I think it's a hyper. I think that's the option. Yeah. Is that right? In uh, <clears throat> I've run into it before, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that hyper file is technically not an extract file, right? It's so when you go to publish, you have to extract it, which is just creating an in memory file for public uh -huh. to reference. So I don't know the solution, but I think that might be the issue. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I, I guess I, I had thought that they were the same thing. So good to know that that's not true. <laughs> I, I could be I could be wrong. Look, yeah. uh, David's just said in the chat, chat hyper files should be treated as extracts. So I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Here we come. Thanks for your question, Kelsey. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for everyone. Um, I'll, yep, who knows? It's maybe just the gremlins. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Alex, I think you had uh, the next question if you want to come off mute and ask. Hello. Um, my question is around Tableau Prep. I hear a lot of individuals using Tableau Prep to clean up the data. 
And I am wondering what, for those folks who use Tableau Prep, what is your original data source and why um, you chose Tableau Prep? Uh, the reason I'm asking the question is most of my data is usually in SQL and I write stored procedures to either update or clean up the data or I use SSIS. And I'm wondering if I'm missing something by not using Tableau Prep. Well, I can um, answer for myself personally. I use Tableau Prep because I don't know SQL. <laughs> I, I imagine it is nowhere near as powerful as actual SQL code or, or other, um, other coding options. Can, can I jump in for a second on that? Yeah. Um, so I use Tableau Prep a lot for when I'm measuring against like goals and specific things like that. So I'll have all of the goals for specific groups in spreadsheets and then pull all of my data out through SQL and just clean it all up in there, like aggregating everything to do sort of a clean data set. Um, that way, aggregating it all together. I'm sure I could do it in Tableau by itself. Um, but it, it's it's a lot cleaner and easier to do that way for me personally. So you're consolidating your Excel spreadsheets. I, I'm consolidating uh, from a lot of different sources, but yes, um, like okay. di different SQL databases. Instead of cr like having to write like all those unions and joins, like okay. I can just click two things and they join together and then aggregate the data. It's it's a much faster, easier way for me to get done what I'm trying to get done. Okay. So it sounds like it's really a tool if you don't have SQL or an ETL tool available. It um, can work, I, honestly, in, in both cases. I've got situations where you can put uh, custom SQL statements as an input step in prep. Um, one project I'm working on now where I've got connections going to uh, an Oracle uh, PeopleSoft database as well as a SQL server. Uh, so I'm pulling from two different ones, logging into each of them, uh, pulling in and combining the results in prep. Uh, so that's one, one possibility there as well. And there's, there's also, you know, for, um, for some folks, if you have end users who don't have access to the SQL or who don't want to see the SQL, being able to see what you've done to that data in prep um, can be helpful without knowing the code. So like they can see, oh, I cleaned up the states to do capitalization. And so you sort of have a little bit more lineage for if your database has bad or un less than ideal data in it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And um, and to pivot, to pivot off that last statement, um, you know, where, where you have might have somebody that has to pick up your your work, um, or multiple people might be working in um, to do the data cleaning. Um, the the to me the prep flow is much more understandable um, for somebody to pick up rather than your SQL scripts. Um, we're working right now on developing some some things and. What we typically do is we build the SQL out first, um, SQL updates, and then work to put it in a flow, um, you know, so so that we can do that process. But there's there's positive, there's probably pros and cons of each. Um, and and I know we have at least one where there is some steps where that prep builder can't do that SQL can. So we obviously have to do that either as a custom SQL script in prep, or we have to leave it in, in the SQL script on, in our database, so. Hey, this is Eddie. I use prep um, definitely because a lot of the data that I'm receiving is from Excel spreadsheets and also from reports and different other things. And I have to crosswalk between some of that data and plus on the spreadsheets, there may be information in different fiscal years in a row and I use pivot so that it pivots in a line. So it's very useful in that to take not only data from Excel, but data from everyone else and combine it into one database that you can then 
do a hyperfile and go into Tableau and do all your visualizations from that. Thank you. All right, so uh, does anyone else have any questions for the Tableau doctors in the house or uh, should we move on to our closeout networking uh, until 5.30 or 5.30 Eastern or whenever people uh, wanna, wanna take off? I see no more hands raised. I'll give people like 30 more seconds while I talk randomly into the void because <laughs> uh, I can't handle silence. Uh, so, you know, this, we, I, I personally was like super worried that we would have no questions. No one would want to come off mute, that this would just be like Ginny and I talking. We, we had a, an example, uh, set up just in case, um, <laughs> just in case no one had questions. And I'm really glad that we didn't have to use it. Um, so if this is something that you guys think is worth doing in the future, let us know. We will be sending out a feedback survey in, a, in just a few minutes. Um, it looks like we do have one more hand raised. Molly, if you want to come off mute. I was just going to offer that if somebody wanted to see a prep flow really quickly, I've got one. That would be great. If you want to go ahead and share your screen. Yeah, yeah it's, I saw we had a question out there um, about like what does prep do for those who aren't in the prep world. Yeah. I'm so working this, on one currently too, but I don't think anybody wants to see it. It's a mess. So this is just an example of like a weekly flow that we, um, so this is our, our, I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces of data here. Um, and it's kind of like macros where it remembers all of the different steps that we do. Um, so we could connect directly to a Postgres with a SQL if we wanted, but each one of these pieces in this um, we can manipulate, we can make steps. It has all of the changes that are logged here in each one of these pieces. I know some people threw out like that they were pivoting. Um, so each one of these pieces has a step. We're very color coordinated um, where I am. So everything flows together. And then you just hit this one button up here to run and it gives you an output. So um, instead of like doing all of your manipulation every single time in Excel or Access, you just reconnect your data um, and you hit run and it, you just refresh it. Um, so it's really easy for cross training is how we use it for um, IR in my office. Any quick questions on this? Go look at the chat. All right, I'll throw my email in the chat if anybody wants to talk. We did, um, we hired a consultant um, and they helped us. We've got nine or 10 different flows that we did um, and built this out. So I love prep. Thanks for showing Thank that you. example, Molly. Yep. Um, so we have a couple more questions in the chat. Um, I think we may try just try to answer those ones uh, directly um, in chat, and if not, um, feel free to, to bring them to the, uh, the our Slack space. Um, and Kelly and Henry and we can we can talk those questions there and maybe find some solutions for you. So, I think we're going to close up our Tableau doctor appointments for now. Um, maybe sometime next year we'll have another one of these sessions. So, what's next? Ginny, take it away. <laughs> All right, so we would love to hear what you thought of today's meeting, especially since it's our last meeting of the year and we are planning to make some changes next year, some you know new and improved HE Tug meetings. So definitely give us your feedback. Let us know what you'd like to see in the coming year. Um, also go ahead and sign up for our next HE Tug meeting on January 24th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern. The uh, event page is up and running so you can register now. We're going to have our Meta community member, Young Me Park from the University of Arizona, 
followed by tips and tricks with Anna Korniotis from Duke. Uh, this was the tips and tricks she was going to do today, but could not. And then we're also going to hear from Peter Spung at UNC System. He is going to talk about data literacy assessment. Finally, if you have any interest in presenting next year, go ahead and fill out our interest form. Uh, you don't have to have a specific date in mind or even a topic in mind yet. Um, if you'd like to meet with us and talk about some ideas, we'd be happy to talk over anything with you. Um, we will stick around in one of our breakout rooms if you'd like to come talk to us today about it. So uh, go ahead and fill out that form if you'd like to do any um, anything with the group next year, even if it's something we haven't done before. Like I said, we're getting ready to change things up, so let us know. All right, I'm just, I'm just gonna to, to put, to say a comment from, from the chat. Um, I don't think I realize this, but Duke and UNC are presenting at the same meeting. So this could be an interesting, uh, interesting meeting, right? Right? A oh ACC my, basketball right. season hasn't started yet. So you're okay. <laughs> but it, but January? Oh, no, wait, it will be in January. Right? Oh yeah, that's probably right? not a good idea. Well, so so come for the fireworks, guys. Um, all right, we are going to stop recording and open up the breakout rooms. Thanks, everyone, for joining.